Thanks a million, Breach. Um, and welcome, welcome everyone to uh, the Guaranteed Irish uh, webinar. Firstly, I'd like to say a big congratulations to, to Breach and Colm uh, and all the, the Guaranteed Irish team for pulling together what's been so far a, a great series of really interesting, informative and inspiring talks. Uh, I hope I'm not going to let the side down today, so, so hopefully that continues. Uh, it's, I, I find it just really heartwarming, I suppose, to see the, the business community come together to help each other uh, through this crisis. So, so fair play to, to you, Guaranteed Irish, for, for doing a great job of bringing all these businesses together and, and helping them out through these, uh, these tough times. Uh, we're delighted, obviously, to be involved. And as Breed said, we'll be running a second webinar in a couple of weeks' time on Thursday the 28th. And this will dig a little bit deeper into more of the data-driven decision-making uh, around advertising for, for your business. Today's webinar is really to give you and your business insights on, into current consumer behaviour in Ireland and internationally. It will give you hopefully an overview of the current Irish media landscape, how successful businesses have historically dealt with advertising in crisis, and how you and your businesses can plan and position yourselves for future, for future advertising. Uh, to increase, obviously, the idea of this is to try and increase your chances of rapid recovery when we do eventually come out the other side. So what we won't try to do today is predict the future. Uh, there's enough, um, in inverted commas, experts uh, trying to tell us what the new normal will look like, um, but we won't. We've enough experience of past and previous crises to know it's probably pure folly to try and predict how people will act, how they're going to react or change to the ever-changing circumstances we are in. What I want to start with is just to give you some context into who, who we are and what we do and why you should bother listening to me and, and our insights today. Um, By Media is an award-winning Enterprise Ireland supported high potential startup company. We've over a hundred plus years of experience in advertising and media amongst the, the senior uh, team alone. And if I was to give you our elevator pitch, I suppose I'd say By Media is an advertising technology that helps SMEs increase their advertising return on investment by an average 27% by making small improvements to planning, purchasing, management, and monitoring of your advertising campaigns across all media. But the real reason uh, why I set up By Media was because um, I really don't like unfairness. And when I look at the advertising landscape for SMEs, I saw a really dysfunctional, inefficient market that I wanted to fix. Um, I've worked in the advertising industry with SMEs for over 20 years, helping them to make the most of their advertising budgets. But the challenge always for the SMEs that I dealt with is that they didn't operate on a level playing field when it came to advertising. You've got big international brands, they have huge resources, they have hundreds of people working in the marketing departments, they have huge budgets to get better advertising rates. They have advertising agencies as well that have access to the most up-to-date consumer research, they have data, they have insights, guidance on where the, their customers are and how best to reach them as effectively and cost-efficiently as possible. So for, for the SME, it's, it's really difficult to compete with that level of expertise and insights. And for us, if, as for setting up a, an ad tech business, I suppose we really should have gone after the big brands because they're the ones with the, with the money and the resources. Uh, but we're a little bit different and we think slightly differently. We believe that the, the SMEs are the real business heroes, um, but obviously they're, they're flawed heroes, you know, they're not perfect. Um, our SME superhero is at a huge disadvantage compared to the big brand advertisers. Uh, the SMEs can't afford access to marketing insights or to employ an advertising agency to do all the heavy lifting and all that work for them. The other main disadvantage we see for the SME um, is that the difficulty in selecting the best media for their business. There's hundreds of advertising options across print, radio, out of home, TV, online, and social. And media channels also operate in silos. So for the SMEs, it's really difficult because of lack of resources to, to choose the right options and choose the best advertising options and make the best advertising decisions for your business. Simple example, um, our research has shown that um, a, a small business using five media channels rather than one media channel with the same budget will get a 38% increase in the return on that investment. However, only 8% of the SMEs that we've, we've looked into actually do this, and it's purely down to lack of resources. So our aim at Buy Media is to, to try to redress that balance, uh, bring the same level of insights, intelligence, planning, buying power, management, and learning to an SME's advertising as the big brands have. But the crucial thing about it is we don't want to bring the same cost level, so without the cost. 
And so to this end, I suppose we're, we're disrupting the media industry. We've built an innovative advertising platform for SMEs and, Am and Amazon for advertising, if you like. And hopefully over the coming months and years, we'll get a chance to show you how we can help some of your businesses redress the balance for you by helping you compete effectively against the bigger international brands so you can get your real fair share of the market. Now, I just want to tell you a quick story of an of initiative that we're launching next week. Um, I know Breach is familiar with this already, um, but it's a quick example of how we're trying to do a little bit more for the SMEs. The, uh, the local enterprise offices, which have been really good uh, for the small businesses throughout this crisis, have launched a, a, a trading online voucher scheme. And it's a great initiative where small businesses can apply for a two and a half thousand euro voucher uh, to help them to get um, their business online, basically. Now, what we saw the challenge was that while the two and a half K was, was great, uh, it's not enough to make a real impact for, for most businesses. We also saw that a lot of the businesses that were applying for the voucher um, actually um, didn't really have guidance and didn't know where they should be going. So we thought we, we could help. So we contacted the e-commerce association of Ireland and we contacted all the buy media media partners to see if we could come together to help small business owners double the value of the voucher with, with the, the value online. So we could offer maybe some extra advertising, online advertising, extra services, extra development work uh, as part of that voucher. So what we've done is we, we were delighted obviously with the support almost all the print and radio titles in ireland have come on board and the e-commerce association of ireland um, with a commitment to double the value of the voucher from two and a half thousand to five thousand and um, we're also delighted you know the, of the support from the business organizations including guaranteed irish with this with, with this campaign and supporting the campaign there'll be more details released next week uh, through the media and um, there's also a trading online voucher for uh, retailers from True Enterprise Ireland, which we're also involved in, but we, we'll tell you more about that next week. And if anyone wants any information on that, you can visit the buymediahq.com uh, website for, for more details. So let's start off with uh, reproduction. Now, we've all become even more obsessed with reproduction than ever. And I'm not talking about the callers to the Joe Duffy show complaining about normal people. I'm talking about the R rate or the reproduction rate uh, of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus. Now this R rate or this R word is going to become more important uh, than ever for our businesses because it will really determine how soon we can return to work, uh, what business can reopen, and then more importantly, how long we can stay open. So, so th this R rate is going to become hugely important for businesses. The other R words that I'm seeing uh, coming into our daily lexicon are, are remote. You know, we've got remote teams. We're revisiting a lot of our advertising plans. We're reimagining what our advertising messaging should be. We're having to review our purpose within our own businesses. We're having to refocus our plan. We're looking at retooling and retrenching in our marketing teams. And then hopefully at the end of it all, we'll all rebound uh, rapidly um, and come out of it on the other side, uh, better businesses. It's also been a, an unprecedented time for the use of the word unprecedented. Um, but all joking aside, without doubt, everything has changed. Um, we don't know if it's forever or if people will return to their old habits. Therefore, your advertising plans need to be really dynamic at the moment and flexible and adapt to match the changing landscape. If not, then your business will end up wasting a lot of money. And that's something that a business or an organization can afford, can't afford to do at any time, but, but even more so right now. So to understand the where, when, how, why, what you should advertise, you really need to understand your customer and you need to understand the media landscape and you need to make, make data-driven decisions. That, and that becomes even trickier uh, in times that we're in now of constant change. Now, many of you may be as well looking at your own changing business models and looking at maybe even changing your businesses. Some retailers are relying more on clicks now than footfall. Some restaurants are becoming food delivery businesses. Um, but whatever the future holds, uh, you must really understand the changing nature of your current and perhaps future customers to give yourselves the best chance of recovery. The mobility habits um, have really changed over the, the past number of weeks as well. Um, and here's some recent uh, data from Google. This is between 26th of March and May the 7th in Ireland. So if your advertising plans say included out of home or radio advertising that was targeting commuters specifically, then it's important for you to adapt your plan immediately because public transport, as you can see here, 
has seen a 63% decline in traffic and there's 62% less people traveling to work now. Not surprisingly as well, uh, there's been a 70% decline in the traffic to shopping centers, restaurants and cinemas. Maybe a bit surprisingly, a 14% decline in grocery and pharmacy traffic and a 6% increase in visits to parks and beaches. Now, I, I hear people say, you know, hopefully we'll, get, we'll go back to normal soon, whatever normal will mean. Uh, but if you, if you look at this report from the Western Development Commission in association with NUIG's Whitaker Institute, they conducted a national survey of 7,241 workers recently. And although 51% of them had never worked remotely before, 83% of them now say that they would like to work remotely after the crisis ends. So it is really possible that your customers and your employees' behaviours may change forever. Now, it's important for your business when you're looking at your advertising messaging to know the changing mood of your customers. Uh, recent, this is recent insight from Kantar that shows 57% of Irish people are feeling hugely concerned about the current crisis. Now, interestingly, that's a 4% decrease from three weeks previously. So signs of people getting used to the situation, or maybe it's just the, the Irish greater resilience that's, that's coming through. Uh, uh, if, you, if you compare that with the UK, that's shown a 21% increase in concern, moving from 25% to 46% over the last number of weeks of people who are hugely concerned about how the crisis is affecting them. And on day-to-day -day, uh, impact on people's lives, Ireland again, we seem to be getting used to and coping well with the new daily routines, whereas the US and UK have seen increased concern over the impact on their daily lives jump significantly uh, over the last number of weeks. And I think here in Ireland, good communication, action and clear messaging has been really important in helping people kind of come to terms and cope with the, the changing situation. It's encouraging as well to see from the data that isolation isn't making people selfish, with the majority of people showing concern more about the vulnerable rather than themselves when it comes to contracting the virus. Buying behaviour is definitely changing and shifting on an ongoing basis and, and over the last few weeks also. Irish consumers have moved more to purchasing uh, more of the stock up type products like dry pasta and cleaning products and they're definitely less influenced now by discounts or offers. So it's really important again that your business knows uh, this type of uh, insight to the consumer before you embark on any major advertising campaigns. We've also seen a huge shift in the type of online products that are experiencing growth and those that are experiencing decline. For example, bread makers, weight training equipment are both in the top 10, but did we ever think we'd see a time that coming into the summer season, things like suitcases, cameras and swimwear would all be in decline, obviously reflecting the, uh, the travel restrictions. But even with all of this changing in, in consumer and customer's behavior, only 8% of people believe that companies should stop advertising. In fact, they find comfort uh, when their trusted businesses and brands continue to communicate with them. But I'm sure you've, you've experienced this yourselves, of emails coming in from brands that you might have signed up with years ago, and you're now being told that they're there for you and they're here to help you. Um, communication shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be contrived or it shouldn't be opportunistic. It needs to be really empathetic and relevant to your customers. Irish customers want your business to be authentic and appropriate when advertising. And our research shows that trust is a huge positive for brands during uncertain times. And for your businesses who have the, 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 the guaranteed Irish logo, which is a 74% recognition rating associated with your brand, creates a huge positive halo effect for your advertising and marketing messages. So, so make sure you use the, all the advantages that you have. And here's an example of what strong brands should be doing uh, with their advertising. As AdWorld noted, the, the new SuperValue advertising reassures customers that even through the most trying times, SuperValue shelves remain stocked, and thanks to the dedication of their staff, the stores will remain open. The messaging also reflects the current expert advice and encourages shoppers to respect a safe distance while visiting their local SuperValue store. And these effective advertising campaigns, they're not just nice to have, or they're not just uh, good for marketing departments to feel good about themselves. They, they actually have a revenue and market share effects. And you can see here that SuperValue is now the number one grocery retailer in Ireland by market share, an increase of almost 1% year on year. So it's a, a great example of advertising crisis management at its best. The top performing brands in Ireland at the moment are trusted state bodies with the rest coming from the grocery sector. And you see the guaranteed Irish members there, Supervalue and Centre, both in the top 10. 
And the strength of these brands is really driven by a combination of high visibility and the message of supporting the nation through this crisis. If we look at um, kind of a big, bigger ticket away from the grocery, bigger ticket purchases and bigger ticket items, some areas have been really hardly hard, hit hard. Uh, and in some sectors, 20, with 25% with of people cancelling, say, for example, a travel purchase. However, some sectors have opportunities to grow, which, like electrical stores are going to be reopening next week, and they should note that 32% of consumers now have new plans to purchase home appliances. Grocery sales in Ireland obviously have been hitting records, and, and records have been smashed in recent weeks, and there was 66 million spent alone on the, the 12th of March. That was the day that the school closures were announced in the grocery section in Ireland. There have been... Uh, disparities and differences in uh, regionally across the country. So Munster has seen uh, the, the, the strongest regional growth in grocery shopping. And demographically, families with school-going children contributed most to the upsurge in grocery sales. The big brand winner has definitely been Odlums. Um, flour, people have gone crazy on baking at home, uh, with a 1.1 million increase in sales year and year. And interestingly, half of those sales came through again through the, the super value uh, chains. Uh, the change in consumer habits and behaviours is also evidence in China. So if we take a look at international markets, um, they're, and they're a few weeks ahead of us, so it might give us an indication as well of, be, of potential behaviours here in the Irish market. Many Chinese consumers tried new things for the first time. So during lockdown, they saw in increases in on online education and consultations, home fitness and online banking, for example. We're all seeing new first-time users in the Chinese market. And the things that the, the Chinese were craving coming out of, of their lockdown were similar things that we've craved here at home as well, like dining out, shopping, entertainment, exercise and travel. So that's kind of a, a, bit, a bit about the consumer. So let's have a look at what the media consumption currently in, in Ireland looks like. Now, we've seen uh, huge increases in on online reach across all the media titles that we deal with. However, the content uh, that, that uh, consumers are looking to, to consume in media at the moment is changing. It's moved away from everybody being totally obsessed with COVID and the crisis and what the, the next steps were, now to more of a, a, a people looking for a lift and looking for entertainment and looking for a, a break away from the, the kind of the crisis information. Uh, if the Reach Mirror Group, uh, they deal, they have, their titles include the Irish Mirror, RSVP, Dublin Live, Belfast Live and Cork Bio. They've seen a 33% uh, increase in consumption of their uh, titles. And also, interestingly, 17% longer dwell time on their, their articles online as well. The Irish Times web and app traffic is at record levels and also their subscriptions, both uh, online and for home deliveries, are also showing strong growth. And Communicore, uh, that covers the likes of News Talk, Today FM and Spin, uh, have seen radio reach up 34% with 45% more time spent on the stations. Uh, their online and, and app listening is also up 38% and 48% respectively. So these trends we've seen replicated across most media titles that we deal with. And it's important, again, that your business has access to these figures when making advertising decisions. Also, in general, Nielsen has shown that uh, media consumption will, will rise by nearly 60% when consumers are, are forced to stay at home. So there's never been, um, I suppose, a time in our media history over recent years where actually consumption is, has increased so, so greatly. If we look at the online, on the social side as well, even online we're finding changing habits during the crisis. Sprout Social released a report uh, last week where they'd analyzed uh, over 20,000 of their customers and they found major shifts in some in, in best social media engagement times across all their platforms and specifically on, on Facebook. And their advice at the moment is given the fluid situation around COVID-19, the only certainty is that the audience behavior will continue to change dramatically over the next few weeks and months. The major updates that they found after just a few months suggest that brands will continue to face challenges, highlighting the need to consistently review and reprioritize their strat strategy throughout the rest of 2020. So we know that consumers are now more engaged with online, traditional and social media than ever before, uh, before the crisis. And they've much more time now to consume both media and your advertising through that media. So now that we know about our customers and the media they consume, what can we learn from previous crises and can it give us some sort of guidance to what we should be doing when we start to come out of the crisis? 
Well, Leon C. Meganson, he was a professor of business and an author of many acclaimed business Bibles, including Successful Small Business Management. Now, Meganson said in a quote that's often attributed incorrectly to Darwin, it's not the strongest that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one that is the most adaptable to change. And if we look forward at the changing landscape for the next three, six or 12 months, we believe now is the best time for your businesses to really take a, a step back review your advertising strategy and tactics so that you can position your business to recover as, as quickly as possible. Our own Dr. Mike Ryan of the WHO, who, who we're all really proud of, is, has said, if you need to act, or if you need to be right before you act, you will never win. Speed trumps perfection. So there's, there's no time to wait. Businesses should plan now, but be flexible in your planning because we're operating in constantly shifting sands and we need to adapt to that change in order to both survive and to recover. The French, they say, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And we, we interviewed a, a number of guaranteed Irish members uh, during the last couple of weeks, and uh, they'll remain nameless. But just uh, as, as a point of information, they, they, they all advertised extensively before the crisis. And most of them have now paused a lot of the advertising that they were previously doing. They said... Uh, what almost seems encouraging was that they intend to go back to the similar type of advertising or the same type of advertising plan that they were doing before the crisis so that they will they will come back to advertise again now for media companies i'm i'm sure that's very encouraging but however our concern for these businesses and in one case i think the the, the business said that their sales were down 85% is that they haven't the resources to research their customers new attitudes and behaviors properly they haven't realized that their customers' media consumption is different from before, and they haven't taken the opportunity to review their past campaigns and look at other alternatives now while they have the time before reopening. Concerning also is the fact that in general, local businesses agree that 50% of their advertising is waste, that they just don't know which 50%. Almost 50% have no budgeting strategy when advertising, and almost 60% don't think that they're spending their advertising budget effectively. And sadly, this is the, the typical SME that we come across, our typical SME heroes. They're, and they're unfortunately trying to do all this themselves as well without any external support or expertise. Einstein was famously uh, noted for saying insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. However, in constantly shifting environment, insanity may be doing the same advertising as you did before and expecting the same results, particularly if the results were good. So when you as your businesses are planning your new, a new advertising strategy, you need to be cognizant that your customers, your market, your business may have changed. And you really need to adapt your advertising to that change based on research and data and not just on a feeling or what you think is the right thing to do. Jeff Bezos of Amazon says he's not interested in where things will change, but where they will stay the same because he can build a business strategy around what won't change, not what will. So if all around us is in constant state of flux and change, what can we actually control internally within our business that can help us to, to generate a, a good advertising or marketing strategy? Well, as business leaders, you can control how your business communicates with your community, and you can control how much advertising budget your business can put behind that communication. If your business is, is not in danger of closure, your staff are safe, and you will expect, and you do expect to trade again, and you will trade again, then now is not a good time to help to, to, to hit the self-destruct button on your brand. The strength of your business brand is hugely important, not just to rapid recovery, but to the growth of your business after this crisis. And here's a, a, an example from Brand Z. Now, Brand Z measures the impact of brand on sales revenue and the company valuation. You'll see that graph on the left-hand side of this chart. On the right-hand side, you'll see the PIMS database, and that's measuring the impact of marketing strategies and profits since 1962 across 3,000 different businesses across multiple industries. And you can see that the top and strong brands outperform the market by between 200 and 300%. And if you can see the 2008, I know the graph is a bit small, but if you can see the 2008, 2009 section of the graph, you'll also see that in times of crisis, your brand strength won't protect you from decline. You will still decline but the severity of the decline is minimized and the road to recovery is faster and stronger by up to 20% more than other brands who actually reduce their marketing spend during the times of crisis. 
Now, when we come through the crisis, uh, there will probably be a small little window of relief. There may be an uplift after some pent up demand is satisfied, but there's no doubt that we'll be operating in a serious recession. And the good thing for, for some businesses is if you've trained marketers and you've, you're a brave business yourself, you know that it's not the time to press the self-destruct button on your marketing and your advertising because you know in a recession that advertising is a long game and it has a long-term impact on your business. Untrained marketers in other businesses will cut their ad spend. This gives your business an opportunity to get excess share of voice um, that will increase over time. And increasing your ad spend during this time can actually grab you more market share, which all ultimately leads to more growth post-recession that is stronger and faster. Now, I mentioned there just a, a quick note on excess share of voice, so a quick explainer on that. Every business has two things, market share and share of voice, and basically your share of voice is your brand's share of the audience. Now, in small businesses, they may be smaller uh, for smaller businesses, but regardless, they're always in equilibrium. So share of voice and excess exceed share of voice um, is, are always in equilibrium. And if you increase your share of voice, and this is done generally by increasing your ad spend, uh, in excess of your equilibrium point, then your market share will automatically increase. And if you decrease your share of voice below equilibrium by generally, again, reducing your ad spend, then your market share generally decreases. Now, in recession, when your competitors across the board are generally cutting ad spend and you don't, then you artificially raise your share of voice without having to spend any more. And this will eventually gain you more market share uh, by just maintaining the ad spend that you're currently at. Now, the bonus, as we said at the moment, is that the media consumption has never been higher. So at the moment, because the media reach and consumption is at an all-time high, your share of voice is amplified even more because audiences are, are larger. And if you want to pull off a real gangster move, then by increasing your ad spend, if you can, at times of crisis like this, when everybody else is cutting theirs, then you actually will gain even greater market share in, in, your, uh, in your field. And you position yourself uh, perfectly for rapid recovery. So when we looked into the, the history of this, so we said, okay, well, let's, let's look at the historical data and look back at some of the previous crises and, and what businesses did. You can see here the historical data from Harvard Business Review during the depression shows that where businesses increased ad spend, they recovered faster and outperformed the competition post depression. And one business uh, where the strategy really paid off was Kellogg's. Now, at the time of the Great Depression, there was a, the, the number one cereal brand in the, in the US was a company called Post. And during the Depression, Post decided to significantly cut their ad spend, while Kellogg's actually invested heavily in it. The result was the Kellogg's grew their, their profits by 30%, and the rest is history. We've seen the same trends when we've looked at the data from the 80s. And so again, the brands that invested in our, our state to maintain their advertising spend throughout the crisis, actually increased quicker out of the crisis and grew market share, similarly in the 90s, and likewise following the recent crash of 2007, 2008. Time and time again, in times of crisis, the brave businesses that can and are willing to invest in their advertising emerge as the winners. And I know uh, from talking to Breach before, Guaranteed Irish have continued to communicate and advertise from the start of this crisis and are now seeing a large spike in membership. So uh, again, the proof, of, proof of that fact. Now, many businesses were like this until, until COVID hit. They were sitting there thinking, okay, we won't have to do any digital transformation or look at, look at any of that aspect of our business for years to come. And then COVID hit with a big bang. So suddenly now businesses are having to look at all aspects of their advertising to see is there any digital tools and processes that can help them become more streamlined, more efficient, and more cost-effective, um, not just in advertising, but across all aspects of business. The, the key thing for businesses at the moment is don't press the brand self-destruct button. Keep communicating at whatever level you can with your customers. Try not to react the, the wrong way to this crisis and learn from the successes and failures of the past when planning your future advertising. For now, the, the recommendations for us is a phased approach uh, to your advertising through crisis. Um, what we think you should be doing now is reviewing, researching, planning, don't work alone, bring in expertise and guidance to help with your plan. Um, by media, just to give you an example, pools our clients' advertising budgets to make campaigns more cost-effective for the smaller advertisers. And as a strong business uh, organization like Guaranteed Irish, members could do exactly the same. And if you need any guidance or help to, on how we do it, happy to share that with you. During the transition as well, 
test new plans. So once you've got these plans in place that you put in place now, once you start to transition back into business, test your plans and make sure the future decisions are based on the data we're getting back from the plans rather than just a feeling on what's working and what's not working. And then eventually when we do get to the other side, the, the hope would be that you're in a great position uh, to immediately execute your new strategy, increase your excess share of voice, grow your market and your market share, and ultimately have very successful businesses. You might not be the next Kellogg's, but who knows? Now, I know that all this sounds relatively easy in theory, and it's easy for me to say all this, like we, you're the businesses that are dealing and struggling with this on a daily basis. Um, but we know that, that, it's, that it really is a challenge for many SMEs to get ready for rapid recovery. And the, 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 the main challenge is the execution of these plans and the lack of resources. And that's why I suppose By Media was formed in the first place because we, we had identified that in the market anyway. And without planning and research, your business has been really flying blind when it comes to advertising. We know that access to an analysis of industry research and data is probably out of the reach for, for most SMEs. The data is really expensive uh, to acquire. The analysis is time consuming and the advertising can be costly if you're not getting a return on it. So unfortunately, your business can become the victim of bad planning and decision making, ineffective targeting and reduced advertising effectiveness. Now, businesses coming out of this crisis can't afford to make bad decisions when advertising. By, by media is here to help with you with that and avoid those pitfalls. So I'd urge you to use the resources that we have, planning, purchasing, managing and monitoring of all your advertising at no cost to your businesses. Now, this will give you the hopefully the edge and a better chance of rapid recovery use that to your advantage, please. So feel free to contact myself or our commercial director, Deirdre Hughes, directly. Colin will be distributing our contact details in the, the presentation after the webinar. And if you want to get any information about any of the initiatives I spoke of, either the trading online voucher or the online retail voucher from Enterprise Ireland, uh, take a visit to our website, bymediahq.com, and you'll be able to contact a member of the team who can guide you in the right direction of what to go. And just to get big thanks again to Breege and Colm and the Guaranteed Irish for having us. Uh, thanks to you for listening. I hope it was of some use to you. And remember that now more than ever, if you fail to plan, it's a plan to fail. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Fergal. I appreciate that. Um, just a couple of questions here for you. Very insightful, Fergal. Really interesting. Thanks. And um, you're right. We have really upped, um, in terms of Guaranteed Irish, on behalf of our members out there, really upped and increased our advertising ourselves, but also um, in terms of creating the messages for our members. Uh, yeah. That has shown a big response and been really positive for both Guaranteed Irish, but also the members who are participating on it across radio, the Irish Times Superbrand, campaign uh we're starting on tv now and uh, so uh, it's been really really strong but the more i suppose we're keeping our names out there in this time the quicker the recovery so i'd be a big fan of that a quick question for you one of the listeners is wondering what size of an sme do they have to be that you would deal with um and you know do you also work across the social platforms because i'd imagine for a lot of smes fergal the big problem is listen i've no i've no um advertising budget um if i take advertising it's kind of on the hoof when I'm thinking, yeah, there's a big campaign I really need to push it. So it's quite unplanned. We're guilty of that ourselves in Guaranteed Irish. So you're really trying to make stretch, you know, your five euros to go far. It's very limited. So how small um, of an SME type of business do you work with? And again, do you also execute advertising spend on behalf of those SMEs across the social platforms? Yeah. So um, again, to, I suppose to to maybe reflect on that question. And that's that's exactly what we had seen and, and what we see on a regular basis across the board is reactive advertising uh, rather than proactive advertising. And in, in those circumstances, what generally happens then is the, the SME doesn't get the results that they're expecting. Sometimes it can be driven by budget. So, you know, we've, we've a bit of cash now, we can afford to advertise. Sometimes it's driven by fear, you know, where our revenues are down, we just need to do something. So it, it's, all, it's always a bad idea to, to try to do advertising in a reactive way. It should be always as much as possible done in a planned way. And I know that's not always possible for an SME that's fighting many fires on many fronts, but that's, that's the ideal scenario. And that's really, I suppose, what we do. We, we come into the business and, and in terms of budget, we work with really, really small businesses. So some of our businesses would be like one person operations uh, that don't have a huge budget. 
they, they can use the platform self-serve on our platform. They can use all the insights and analysis that we have there to help them with the initial planning. They can then go through the purchasing piece. And, and as I said there, Bridge, um, the, the pooling of the resources of all of the people that are using uh, by media and the platform is really important because the large advertisers help the smaller guys because if if we're pooling budgets together it means that the smaller guys get the advantage of the rates that the bigger guys are getting so you you have you can purchase all your campaigns and to to answer the question we do all types of media so again it's I, I mentioned that like an amazon for advertising it's literally all types of media that that you can do so we have traditional newspapers, magazines, uh, radio, out of home, TV. You can then have things like programmatic TV from Sky. You have Facebook, you've Google, you've LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, whatever, whatever the business needs. So all the media companies uh, options are on there um, and you can start from a very small budget. So if you're spending five euro a day or whatever on Facebook, you can do exactly the same to ourselves. But the advantage you have is you have the added expertise. It doesn't cost you any more money. It's just um, um, the business model is, is geared towards the SME rather than uh, the media company. 